What's more American than apple pie and baseball? I think that's how the saying goes. But apple pie spice, what is it? And it seems like the less popular relative to the pumpkin pie spice, which is all the rage we all know in the fall. But you'll see as I talk to you about what it actually is and how it's used, it's actually quite similar. There's only one ingredient that is really the big difference between pumpkin pie spice and apple pie spice, but there are even some recipes of apple pie spice that call for that ingredient. If you are curious about what pumpkin pie spice is, I will leave a link to that podcast episode down below in the show notes for you guys to check out after you watch or listen to this episode. Apple pie spice is not one singular recipe. It can vary from brand to brand, and as I said, from recipe to recipe. The nice thing about making your own spice blends is that you can curate it to have more of one spice that you may prefer and less or none of a spice that you don't necessarily care for. The not nice thing about spice blends being different is that if you go to buy apple pie spice at the store, you may find one that you don't necessarily care for, but then you may just think, oh, I don't care for apple pie spice, but if you were to try a different brand, you may really enjoy that one. Or you may not mind either way. So let me tell you about the spices that make up apple pie spice. These are all warm spices. So we have cinnamon, of course, nutmeg, allspice, cardamom, maybe ginger, maybe mace in place of nutmeg, and or clove. So McCormick's spice blend contains cinnamon, nutmeg, and allspice, as does King Arthur flowers. Ginger is the one ingredient that you're not necessarily going to see in an apple pie spice blend. That one is most prevalent in your pumpkin pie spice. My sources, which I will leave linked down below in the show notes or in the description, said that allspice pairs well with apples, but it is quite potent, so you'll tend to see a lot smaller of a ratio of allspice compared to other ingredients in a recipe. Clove is another ingredient that's often found in pumpkin pie spice, but you will also find it in some apple pie spice recipes. Cinnamon, nutmeg, and allspice tend to be the three staple ingredients that you'll find in the most basic recipes, but of course bakers tend to have their preferences. I personally don't love allspice, but I like cardamom, so I might be more inclined to sub in cardamom in place of allspice. So let me give you some recipes. Again, I will put these down below in the show notes, in the description, and they'll be in the links to all of my sources. So King Arthur has one teaspoon of cinnamon, a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg, and a quarter teaspoon of allspice. That's it. From Chef Lindsay Farr, she has a little bit of a larger recipe, and it's very similar to the King Arthur recipe. It's four teaspoons of cinnamon, one teaspoon of nutmeg, and a half teaspoon of allspice. From Love and Lemons, an even bigger recipe, four tablespoons of cinnamon, one teaspoon of ginger. This is the one recipe that has ginger that I'm gonna share with you. A half teaspoon of nutmeg and a half teaspoon of cardamom. The Spruce Eats has two tablespoons of cinnamon, one tablespoon of nutmeg, so a lot more nutmeg than the last recipe, one and a half teaspoons of allspice, and one and a half teaspoons of cardamom. And the last recipe I'll share with you from My Baking Addiction, four tablespoons of cinnamon, one and a half teaspoons of nutmeg, a half teaspoon of allspice, one teaspoon of ginger, and one and a half teaspoons of cardamom. As we have noticed, all of those recipes vary slightly, but the one nice thing about making your spice blend at home is that you can make a small batch of it and try versus having a whole bottle. And I know you can buy like the short little spice blend bottles at the grocery store, but say you use it for one recipe and you don't really care for it, you have the whole rest of the bottle that you're either going to let sit in your cabinet or you're gonna throw it away or maybe you'll give it to someone else but it just feels kind of wasteful and for me especially I for I don't cook with I don't think I've ever cooked with apple pie spice but I have cooked I've made recipes that call for pumpkin pie spice so I don't buy pumpkin pie spice I just have, I know which ingredients I prefer. So even if a recipe calls for me to add allspice, I don't. I just stick with cinnamon, ginger, and nutmeg. Yeah, cinnamon, ginger, nutmeg. Those are my pumpkin pie recipe, or pumpkin recipe 
spices. <laughs> Let's get into recipes that you may or you can use apple pie spice in. And when I was thinking about it, I just thought, well, there's apple pie. Like, what else would you use it in? Maybe apple crisp. I mean, there are a ton of other apple recipes, but I guess I never thought, I didn't put too much thought into it. And there are a ton. There will be links to recipes. If you need a recipe link for a specific recipe, let me know down in the comments if you're listening, watching on YouTube and I'll find some recipes for you, but cakes, muffins, scones, apple crisp, as I mentioned, you can mix it with sugar for an apple cider donut coating, delicious. You can put it in your apple cider, in your coffee. Have you seen how some people will take their coffee grounds and they'll put spices in their coffee grounds and then brew their coffee that way? You can sprinkle it on top of a foamy latte. And I really like this idea. If you're making homemade whipped cream, put the spice in the cream before you whip it. That just sounds delicious. Imagine putting that on top of your apple pie. And I know apple pie, vanilla ice cream, but maybe someone wants whipped cream and then you have spiced whipped cream. That sounds so good. Mix it into your oatmeal or yogurt. Use it in a batch of homemade granola. Put it in your pancake or waffle batter or in your French toast custard, you know, the egg and milk mixture that you put the bread in before you pan fry it, before you make your French toast. Spiced candied walnuts, delicious. And now we're starting to get into some salads and meats and rices. And personally, that seems wrong to me, but I mean, I think it's a personal preference. Think more like Moroccan dishes or some African dishes have more of those warm spices in them. So rice pilaf or think of baked or mashed sweet potatoes. So I know some people like sweeter, sweetened sweet potatoes, like with the marshmallows, the candied, candied sweet potatoes. I can see that. Those aren't my favorite either, but some people really like those. And one of the simpler ideas is um, roasting some apples that you've sliced, drizzled with honey, and sprinkled with some apple pie spice. That sounds good. If you have a recipe that calls for apple pie spice and you're itching to share it, go ahead and drop that in the comments. And like I mentioned towards the beginning of this episode, if you're curious to know what pumpkin pie spice is, I will leave a link to that down in the description or in the show notes. If you're watching on YouTube and you're a pumpkin spice fan or a pumpkin spice latte or a pumpkin cream cold brew fan, I am about to go record the recipe for a copycat pumpkin cream, the, the pumpkin cream cold foam. So be sure to subscribe so that you get notified when I drop that recipe. Mm -hmm.